Oh, cool. So hi, I'm Nathan. Um, um, I'm going to talk, I'm going to focus this talk on uh, this concept of, you know, the evolution of uh, form factors and interfaces, which is something I'm researching and, you know, how sort of they impact technology and in turn impact how products are made and how we may or may not uh, kind of uh, adopt them. So I, I, you know, I'm currently um, working on my PhD at the Media Lab. Specifically, I sit right there. Um, and, uh, you know, but, but before I got to the Media Lab, I spent uh, a little over 10 years in, you know, what, what we call the industry. And so at some point in time, I ran uh, the R&D Center for Samsung in Israel. Um, and, you know, we thought we, thought we were making uh, augmented reality. And, you know, we actually shipped this mixed reality game. It was pretty cool. It was this experience where you had two handsets um, and they were Bluetooth connected and, you know, Samsung wouldn't put out anything that had to do with killing stuff. So we had to save the poor creatures from the bubble. So hence the bubble gun. Um, so it was pretty cool. And you saw kids running around. It was nice. Um, but, you know, taught me that, that, you know, trying to get a uh, connected experience, you know, mixed reality is very, very hard, especially with those little devices. You know, and then I, al I you know, I was also, also a, a product designer type of person, so I always kind of connected to um, uh, the notion that to really get, get great experiences, you have to put hardware and software together. You know, some of them never left the labs, but still, you know, it's been a great experience. You know, so moving on, I, I you know, just before joining MIT, I, I built, uh, I was the lead uh, user interface designer for uh, this robot. Some of you may know as uh, Baxter uh, from Rethink Robotics, which is a new type of uh, uh, industrial robot that basically works with a person. So trying to work on a robotic OS and interactions. And, you know, more recently uh, working on, you know, creating a new typology, in fact, for 3D printing. And so I'm, you know, I'm not going to really go into it. You know, Formlabs is a big story in itself, and you know, we sold a bunch of printers. And I do apologize for the shameful plug, but you know, the idea that that you can use uh, uh, an ecosystem tools knowledge today to very quickly go go from a concept to a real product is uh, super important. And I think you know, the Form One is is sort of that story, which leads to what I want to talk about today, which is this. Uh, uh, ev evolution of the luminar devices that that I've been working on um, for a while at MIT, and 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 that you know that that might be uh, you know a good point to you know go back to this notion of uh, interface evolution. So I think we can agree on this general timeline where where you know where we you know we went you know from the mainframe to the device in our hand somewhere along the line we got the um, the laptops and you know mobility came came about wireless communication the web, um, and I think we also agree that th you know in fluid interfaces that what we like to think about is that you know the, what's the next interface it's the world so the world will become instrumented with sensors and uh, actuators and uh, you know and pixels kind of jump out of, of uh, uh, the screen and and they're you know they're in the real world and we finally get to this integration of digital and physical, but you know. There's there's fair question to be asked. Uh, you know, some of them are in. You know, why do that anyway? Uh, and the other one is, uh, you know, wh what are the big problems? So let, let's talk about you know the big problems, just really quickly. So, I think you know this is for those of you who've been to MIT. This is a, like a MIT hack at Stata Center. I, for some reason, people in MIT are super proud of that. You know, um, I'm still trying to figure it out. You know, not being originally from MIT, but you know, if, if you do that, that's kind of funny. But the the metaphor here is like you know the the uh, you know, we're dependent on digital uh, information, and we kind of take it for granted, and we think, uh, you know, we're just gonna have it a anywhere at any place. And uh, and I think, and I think by now the problem is, you know, is the overload of information, and and it's not about the ability to search and find; it's about relevancy. Um, but still, you know, we'll, we're not gonna look back. We're not gonna live in a world that is informationless. You know, which brings me to the next problem, which is. The real world, on the other hand, uh, it, you know, what I'm trying to say here is, of course, we have all these devices to get to the information anywhere we want to when the battery runs out, right? So, But the problem is that the real world is physical still, and it's not going to change, you know, uh, as far as I can tell. And so you see we're sh not only techno-dependent, but like the displays are 
just growing and growing and you know they're gonna take over very soon um, I think last year uh, the statistics I've I've heard at least is that you know finally they're selling more screens than computers and the increase is uh, you know five inches you know moved from 18 to 21 inches uh, this is uh, from I supply so so it means that you know when we have more people we're not gonna have more space and we're gonna give up more space to display so something's wrong and you know ubiquitous computing that we were all promised is not really happening and there's no room level level computer and um, you know in the physical world we still work with objects and pens and papers and all that stuff I don't think that's going away either um, so it's kind of complex uh, and, and in fact like from the introduction of PC nothing changed like it's still you know uh, you know mouse based com uh, keyboard some sort of a direct manipulation type of interface and then the, the other thing that's going on is that we are kind of uh, device curators and in, in every increasing cycles we kind of get more and more devices and kind of take care of them and change their batteries and uh, sync their software and make them talk to each other and we think it's all great but in fact it's very painful okay uh, and this is kind of out of date and you, you know and I, I thought about changing this image but you know now I have another point to make on it so you can see the flip camera that is obviously gone so we know convergence is happening and that's all great but but humans don't change so we have a very constant bandwidth like uh, the speaker before me mentioned and and like we are the pipeline to connect and that's pretty hard work to do all the time so let I, I want to share with you sort of my take on the state of AR before I get to you and this is sort of my mandatory Google Glass slide that uh, you know they you know, forced me to put it here um, but um, that's that's not actually true but but um, but 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 the I, I want to make two points so we got to give it to Google because they managed to do uh, you know it's not fair because they're, they're this huge company that does no evil and uh, you know they have all this money to put on this and they can make a decision quickly which is good um, and they created a form factor even though this you know this this type of technology is used to aim uh, you know guns on on helicopters for years and years and and have been used uh, for many other purposes but you know now it's here so we have to kind of deal with it so doesn't mean it doesn't mean it doesn't matter if you buy into head mounted display or not you know the second thing they managed to do is create this amazing stream of jokes and for you know for the people who are out there wearing Google Glass you know may have a hard time to read this I'll read this for you so you know every time I see someone with a Google Glasses I'm going to uh, go up to them and scream Google uh, Glass you know image search horse fog safe search off open first 50 result and new tabs so and then I'm gonna run off to the so listen you know this is I'm sorry for the language uh, but um, you know I didn't write it but 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 no seriously uh, the it's 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 quite simple you're seeing the tensions that introduction of new form factor rises and how big is the learning curve we all have to go through for this to actually matter for real not just be you know some billionaires hallucination that became product that became something okay and not to say anything about processes and privacy you know I do have my own opinions I think you know we, we can talk about this later if you guys want but I want to push forward really quickly because 15 minutes is super hard um, here so in my work and talking about current AR I identify three major interaction limiting factors that you know we got to see when I see all this stuff with tablets and you know things I've seen 10 or more years ago so fundamentally this is AR which is screen bounded it's completely uh, limited and then it, it also means that the hands are not free so you can see in this picture that the image you know you to get something meaningful you're holding and you're kind of have a mediator to the real world and that that's a huge problem that's not how we actually are wired up and then it requires context switch you know like go between physical and digital and so on and so forth it's kind of insane now I think there's a third type and this is what I'm working on which is projected AR that has a big promise to become a very big interaction medium and that is projected augmented reality of course and I know uh, it has problems like the typical stuff uh, you'd imagine like occlusions and shadows and display intensity and that's all clear but at the same time we've been designing uh, uh, these types of uh, we've designing sort of AR uh, from the back forward from active displays and not through not thinking about light as the key interaction medium so all our design is basically wrong so if you design with the light in mind and assuming like we're very accustomed to shadows you know there's a huge shadow here and we can understand light intensity and all that you know maybe there's something we can do and the good thing that happening is that technology is getting better 
So the ex exponents for projection, sensing, and, and uh, microcontrols, and so on and so forth is great uh, and working well for this technology. Just, you know, one more problem is that, uh, you know, research is very slow. And, and the reason it's very slow, you know, we, I don't know if it's, you know, the need to publish papers, but when you look up projector camera systems, you see something like this, which is a very complex sort of hack with, you know, some, some sort of a contraption, or you see something like this London restaurant in Amo. And, there, and, you know, and those are uh, installations. So there is no form factor to kind of do real projected augmented reality, and that's what Luminar was trying to do. And this is sort of the idea that there is this um, ability to finally put together a really small uh, projector camera system with, you know, the computer and the sensors. And in this case, it has uh, an Edison socket, so it can just screw up like a light bulb, and all of a sudden you get interaction, and that was like the heart uh, of this project. But who cares? Because that's all technology. People care about design. So, you know, this is sort of a design object. When we were, when we were building this project, we were working on many, you know, finding a design language for this, and finally we came up with um, you know, this is the Luminar Blackjack, um, which is a, um, uh, an angle poise uh, task light that happens also to be kinetic, uh, that, that hosts this bulb and enables you to do many things that you'd expect, okay? So, so some people call it like, this is a projected iPad. So if you're seeing like a, um, you know, a demo where we have a, a, you know, a full app stack that is HTML5 based and JavaScript and you can write, uh, a uh, little bit of code and all of a sudden you can create an application on, on real space and you're seeing like very, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, almost trivial things this, this, th that it can do. So like, you know, use gestures to navigate a bunch of information or, you know, it becomes much more interesting when, when you, um, you know, add physical object to the equation and, and, and here, you know, let's pause for a minute and think, you know, what happens when applications, which applications are, are metaphors, right? You know, are virtual objects. They're not like you, you click on some icon that represents something and do some actions. But here, you know, back, you know, we're kind of taking back the desktop metaphor and putting it on our desk in this specific application. So, so can objects really become part of an application? And so what does it mean to have an API for objects? Of course, you need to detect them, to track them, and so on and so forth. And of, and, and of course, the technology for that is, is already coming and happening because we have it in our mobiles now, and, and we're kind of thinking what it can do for us, uh, you know, for all those use cases that uh, we've seen uh, before. Um, another aspect of this is uh, the idea that, uh, you know, once, once you have a, 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 a relatively simple system, you can start, um, in this case, I, uh, you know, do interesting things with it. And what I, I decided to do is kind of put it on, um, on this uh, robotic uh, arm and then let it, um, uh, introduce the idea that uh, workspaces can have m uh, memory. So, so, you know, I, again, and this was like very, very, very quick sort of exploration to kind of think, well, um, if, if this thing moves slow enough and it's not gonna scare me, then maybe we cannot think about this as a robot and suddenly like, you know, this kinetic stuff is, is maybe relevant. I, I mean, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of throwing it out there. I'm not, I'm not even sure. But what's certainly relevant is that, you know, all these devices, those classic devices, you know, they're not going anywhere, right? We're, we're still gonna be in a world where you're gonna have the tablets and the iPads and so on. And this exploration is how you can um, sort of make two gestural languages, um, uh, you know, meet. And so you have one device that talks touch and the other talks more gesture but then you know you can swipe around content back and forth from those two devices and and, and you know swipe it back to 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 have a full loop and have the device uh, kind of uh, be able to you know facilitate on one end you know this is a shared white space that you can work on um, but at the same time you can you know, you know drag content back and forth relatively easily so um, so in an effort to kind of take it forward and I'm going to just show you another a quick iteration of this, you know, we did uh, some collaboration with uh, Qualcomm and tried to build this into, uh, you know, ARM, you know, an ARM-based, Android-based kind of form factor. And I'll show, I just want to quickly show you this. And, and this, this is sort of uh, the reason we're, you know, we're, we're proud uh, to show this is because, you know, this, uh, this, this uh, Loxo lamp is really connected to, uh, to power and, you know, it's a little bit heavy, so we have these bands so this thing doesn't fall down. But, you know, once, once you power it up, there's really just one Android app and it, 
you know, if you fire it up and then on the back end it runs the same software because of course everything is Linux. Um, and you know, then you can kind of, uh, you know, kind of use the same stack. And of course it's slow and it, you know, has ways to go and things like that, but, but, but it, it shows the, the promise of, of, of uh, this technology. And of course, once you have that, you can relocate it to different areas. And, and then you know, maybe we're starting to seeing like the, you know, the, the, the use cases we're all aware of, of uh, um, having um, um, you know, technology in our kitchen you know, for uh, getting recipes, for example. Uh, but obviously there are many more. And so, you know, so far I talked about the hardware and the, the form factor and, uh, and just I want to leave you with like a few thoughts and, you know, this is, a th this is more about the software end. So we have this SDK, it's called uh, Luminar Lens and we kind of use it internally to build everything. And, you know, we think that building AR applications, uh, you know, should be as simple as that. And I, and I don't think it's going to be uh, very, very new to anybody here. Uh, uh, but those, but, you know, software is a big driver of, of these devices becoming really smart and connected and kind of, uh, des designed to fit the, the world we live in today and the systems, uh, you know, that we all kind of use every day. And, 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 um, and so here, here are some of the new capabilities that you can see, you know, by now, you know, a full multi, we have a full multi-touch and, um, you know, the ability to, you know, do interesting gestures like drag and drop or pull up a keyboard. Um, and of course, like, uh, add a physical object and, you know, take snapshots. And um, so, so it's pretty exciting, uh, but uh, it's really not enough. So basically, I, I just wanna, wanna be cautious a little bit and just say that you know, um, projected AI ha has tons of potential to become a real interaction modality that really integrates digital and physical. But in fact, you know, we, all of us you know, have a lot of hard work oh, that, you know, to, to realize it. And you know, by the way, this is, the, this is some, some widgets that you can see you know, how close this thing is. But anyway, uh, close as it, as it is, there is still, you know, tons of work to do and I'd love to talk to all of you, you know, about that. So thank you. <laughs> and I think, I think technically I'm supposed to take questions because that was like only one minute over. So if there are any questions, I don't know if that helps or who's next or not. All right, guys. Cheers.